Welcome to Checkpoint Real Talk, a podcast for security folks who want less F-U-D and more F-U-N. In each episode, we'll have lighthearted conversations about security, people, processes, and technology as we react to how they're portrayed in film and TV. We'll bring in experts from inside and outside Checkpoint to break it down. What was accurate? What wasn't? And what can you apply to real-world cyber events? In this week's episode, host C.A. Yasutornrat and guests John Finnamore, Head of Cloud Security Architects Americas, and Matt Stevens, Senior Solutions Architect, join us to chat about ABC TV series, Criminal Minds, Season 9, Episode 12, The Black Queen. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Checkpoint Real Talk. I'm your host, Sia, and today we are joined by Matt and John, two illustrious cybersecurity experts who have been gracious enough to join me in this adventure of reacting to, oh, let's just say, how awesome, I say it with quotation marks, how awesome technology and cybersecurity is depicted in media. So today we are going to look at Criminal Minds and uh, full disclosure, apparently two thirds of us have never watched the show. So this is gonna be a lot of fun because this will be really reacting to it. So Matt, John, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. Glad to be here. Oh my gosh, you guys, you are so awesome and so gracious. So um, John, can I just ask you, because you were the one uh, that picked out Criminal Minds, can you just give me a little history of like what was your experience why why did you yeah you know so i've been a cyber cyber security cyber it guy for a very long time and uh, i've watched the uh, the evolution of of tv shows i remember 24 they always talked about the firewall and criminal minds you know they everything was so simple and i used to kind of giggle and say well why don't why didn't they just hire a college intern you know to make this a little more accurate uh, I haven't watched the uh, episodes lately, but when I did, um, I found that they actually got a lot better in terms of the consultation that they're getting from from IT guys, and uh, they are a little more accurate. A lot of it is still fictitious, but at least it's based on underlying truth. And I just love um, uh, that that lady Garcia. You know, she uh, she's like a supercomputer person so she's kind of fun on the show so i thought that might be a fun one. oh nice nice so matt what are your impressions of what you think of criminal minds will be about do you have any idea uh no i haven't seen it before but uh, i've watched a lot of uh you know movies and shows in the past and like when i'm watching it with my wife and she'll you know turn over and see me chuckle because uh I'm going, this is not at all <laughs> the way it's done, you know, when, when you've worked in IT for you know, as many years as I have. So uh, it's always kind of fun to, to peel back the layers of the onion, and, uh, but uh, entertaining nevertheless. You know, I've always been, and I've been doing this show for a little bit now, and what I'm seeing is, and we know this, you guys, uh, it is entertainment, right? We want to be entertained. We want suspension of belief, right? But how hard is it as security professionals, as IT professionals, as executive business professionals to watch some of these shows and it's just <laughs> so far from, you know, far left field? I mean, can you stay in the show or do you do what I do, which is literally yell and say that doesn't No, That's not how it works. <laughs> like, can you actually stay in it? Yeah, I personally don't mind. You know, um, what we do is hard. You're self-selected. You got to think a lot. And, uh, you know, it's got a stereotype of maybe being a little geeky, you know, we're a little, we're a little nerdy and anything that uh, Hollywood can do to make us look a little more glamorous, I'll take it, you know, <laughs> I don't mind the, the glamour with, uh, you know, the, the fantasy around uh, <clears throat> making it look sexier maybe than it really is. And not do you really think it makes us look better, you guys? I mean, come on. <laughs> like, like anything. As... We, we've got no place to go but up. <laughs> I, I, there we go. That is a true. So uh, we did a previous episode uh, episode on the IT crowd, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a British comedy sitcom back in 2010 or something like that. <laughs> Time is flying by, and uh, they were in the dungeon, like they were in the basement of this like major, you know, you know, conglomerate, you know, uh, business. Um, they've come a long way, but has it really in the context of, um, you know, especially for ha hackers, they're like, oh, they got to be in a hoodie, uh, in a t shirt, like. Uh, do you guys like that depiction? It's fine. It's a good connotation. Um, you know, most, uh, I, uh, 
when I think of hacking, it's, it's nine parts art and one part science, you know, so actually the good ones, all of the scams in the last 10, 15 years are, you know, phishing emails, they're social engineering based. So your average hacker is probably a pretty slick dude, like a con artist, but then everyone kind of focuses on that super smart 1% that goes really deep, goes into the code, looks for zero day exploits, things like that. That's what you think about, but you actually have to be more cautious of uh, the uh, the artful crowd, uh, I, I think, on, on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, you seen the same thing or feel the same yeah, way? You have to be much more uh, cautious, I'd say. I mean, uh, even, you know, with my experience in the industry, I'm often, you know, uh, surprised at how legitimate an email will come in and look and uh, you know, I got one yesterday where it was a attachment with a invoice and it was, you know, McAfee's security renewal and, uh, you know, something to that effect. And it's like, well, that, now I don't use that product and I know it's not up for renewal. So I know that this is a phishing attempt, but, uh, you know, for somebody else that maybe that's what they use, they get it from Comcast and they think it's, you know, them reaching out and asking uh, for renewal you know, calling to validate that they want to do that. And then suddenly they've given their personal information to somebody that's a threat actor. So, uh, yeah, you have to uh, really be on guard. Um, it's something that I, uh, help to uh, train my friends and family on. And then, uh, you know, everybody has to, they will, they will. Uh, I got, I had to pay a bunch of tolls. You know, I travel from North Carolina up to Eastern Canada and I pay a bunch of tolls. They somehow hacked into who paid their tolls. And then they sent me text saying that uh, I've got on paid, pay it now, fines over and over and over again. And yeah, you just have to be careful. They will, uh, that's the art of it, right? They try to find something very plausible, the more information they can get, see what you really used, and then just see what they can get from you. You know, it's, it, it is so sad. Like I think, again, being with technology, we have the technology to prevent a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But human behavior is human behavior. Social engineering will always exist. So you could have 15 layers of different types of platforms, top blocking, tackling, (laughs) et cetera. But you just need that one person, the CEO, just be like, oh, okay, click, and just tunnels right through everything. You know what I mean? It's just crazy to me. So on that note then, so Criminal Minds. So is it a show about... um, uh, all, is it all technology based or is it just no, criminal no, no. minds? It's, uh, it's a group inside of the FBI that um, are profilers. Um, so they're a specialist team. They work on cases that um, they profile who the person might be. And then they have this super technical lady that goes out and does all kinds of crazy computer things. Most of it is not that real, but some of it is based on reality. It's uh, yeah. So it's just a small flavor of the show. Okay. So this lady that you talk about, Diego, um, this is the story. Garcia. Oh, Garcia, Garcia. Sorry. Oh my God. Diego Garcia. I'm so bad. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, so Garcia uh, comes on board and this, uh, we took a couple from uh, season nine, episode 12. And then there's another clip that we're going to use that I just thought was really kind of funny. Um, full disclosure, Criminal Minds is an ABC production and they're very particular. So hopefully knock on wood, they don't yell at me too much, but let's go ahead and let's review our first video. And I think this is where they convince Garcia to join the crew, if you will. So are you guys ready for your first clip? Ready. And now, is this the first time they are meeting? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's in a later episode, but this is a flashback. You say so, suit. We've got evidence of your offsite servers and of your hack into the cosmetics company. They test on animals. Yes, they do, but it's not illegal. What you've done is a felony and it's punishable by prison. What have you got me, J. Edgar? It's Agent Hotchner, and I'm from the Behavioral Analysis Unit. And I'm here to offer you an option to prison. You come work for me. You be our technical analyst. Now, hacktivism is real. It is. Use Google, that kind of thing. That's fun. You'd help us hunt psychopaths. Oh, I love that. I help you Google. (laughs) I'm a psychopath. In hacker circles, you're known as the Black Queen, and you are rigorously moral. 
All of your online attacks reflect a fierce desire to protect those who you think are being hurt. You accept my offer, you can do the same thing for the federal government. I just need a That's resume. so funny to me. I need a resume. <laughs> <laughs> of bringing my resume to events I am handcuffed at, but I have some stationery in my purse, and I'll write down some computery stuff. Computery I stuff. Right, let's pause. <laughs> so, okay. let's pause right there. Um, okay. Let's talk about this for a second, you guys. I actually know uh, hackers that have been caught by FBI, went to jail for it, Um do you think it is reasonable, plausible to have them say you're the black widow and you're the best at it, so we're going to hire you or you go to jail? Is that is that a real thing? So um, as implausible as it sounds, it actually is. Now, I would say, now I've got a son. He's in his uh, fourth year computer science, uh, focusing on cybersecurity. I wouldn't recommend this as a job <laughs> sourcing exercise. But um, there are instances, when I was a young fellow coming up uh, in Canada, um, there was a famous hacker, he was just a teenager, he went under the moniker of uh, Mafia Boy, and he did a bunch of DDoS attacks on Amazon, a um, few other large companies, did his prison time, but then after that, um, they actually hired him back as a consultant. And uh, in the U.S., another guy, uh, very similar, maybe 10, 15 years ago, he hacked um, CNN, a bunch of other different news sites. Um, after he served his sentence, he actually is uh, now an informant and a consultant to the FBI and the Army. So it does happen, but uh, as I say, uh, not, not, not recommended. You're uh, a 99.59 chance of uh, going to jail and never getting a, a normal job again. Matt, would you hire uh, <laughs> well, Garcia? You know, I think it's a little bit of quid pro quo. So it's, <clears throat> you know, if you hire, if we hire you and uh, we get a little information about you, maybe we'll, you know, uh, take some some years off of your sentence. But uh, I agree with John. It's you know, it's not something where they're just going to be able to walk for uh, for for the crimes they committed. So. Uh, uh, hire is, str is, is strong, but work with to get gather information. Yeah, probably, you know, to, to get some intel and which could help us all, uh, you know, going forward. Awesome. Yeah, but to get a job in cybersecurity, there's all kinds of background checks. And if you're doing anything in the federal government, I used to have guys working for me uh, in the federal government and they had to do polygraphs. They call me and ask questions. They talk to their neighbors. Yeah, you uh, usually you have to be really squeaky clean. And, and, and truthfully, my friend has, he's had some real challenges mm -hmm. uh, because of that. So uh, I, I don't want to go into too much detail because he actually might be a future guest. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, um, no, uh, so <laughs> I just thought it was funny because I thought FBI, especially as a government entity, would have extraordinarily rigorous uh, hiring practices. And for him to simply say, write up a resume. Like, I just thought that was so flippant. I just love that part of it. Just kind of, again, one of those moments that just threw me off saying, seriously, dude. And she said, yeah, I'll just put some yeah. computery <laughs> stuff on, on a piece of paper and hand it to you. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. And, but the first part in terms of um, hacker and activism is very real. There's all kinds of hacktivists out there. Um, you know, in, in the criminal one, I was doing some work uh, back when Matt and I were um, at our previous company working together. Um, was right around the time in 2014 when um, everything went down with Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and you know our headquarters was up there, so I was kind of in the in the spot. But some hackers broke into some government websites and they published a bunch of data on the police, the police officers involved, and yeah, it's real but um, very legal, obviously. Oof. All right, well, okay, so let's continue on with the recruitment of our fine illustrious uh, leader. Look at that, she's accepting, signing her life away. Keeping your purse is important.
harassment does happen and doesn't exist. I'll just say, I'll just go and keep it at that. Um, I did like the way she had a little punchy look though. When she said it, a little anger in there. Mm-hmm. Is she an angry, is she an angry bird or a sassy no, bird? No, just a, a lot of attitudes all. Okay. Okay. So why do you think she had that? Uh, well, a, first off, she signed and didn't read. Would anybody in their right mind who's quote negotiating with the FBI and the government not read their document? <laughs> uh, probably not. Uh, you may be excited to sign if it's going to keep you out of jail. But, um, yeah, the fine print would always be important. I yeah. imagine it would be more than one page, too. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I mean, do we? Do you think we have... Do you think we as a government would do that, though? Like, here's your offer, you sign now or walk away? Is that legal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All of it is very, very, very suspicious. But, um, yeah, I mean, who knows? Well, for all my HR friends out there, I, I understand that's harassment, uh, that she was kind of like look, looking at him and, and saying what he was saying, she's saying, but uh, it wasn't not true, though. So just saying the guy's good. Looking. <laughs> so I'm going to admit. That. So, yeah, I think I think that would be uh, grounds for a pass um, in, in today's world. But uh, good at Hollywood. Yeah. 100%, 100%. Okay, great. So thoughts on this clip. So uh, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being ultra realistic, one being a wonderful fiction, it might as well be a cartoon. Closer to a one than a 10, That's, you know. Oh, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, one and a half, so. <laughs> okay. So this is yeah. this would be on the theatrics yeah, side of things. Okay. Definitely. Well, okay, so let's. Let us talk about our next clip. So the the next clip that I wanted to share was a interesting one because it um, it showed her. I guess it's a flashback scene of, or I don't know if it's a flashback scene. She just got recruited, and I think she's coming back to bring her ex boyfriend down. I th- think that's the context. Yeah, this is several years later uh, in this episode. So um, they flash back to um, her and how she got recruited. Okay. And I don't know, it's like nine years later or something. She's delving back into her Black Queen hacker past to um, go after her old organization. Okay. Oh, I like the premise of this. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, guys. Give me your mom's credit card. Hey, Shay. What's up? What the hell, man? We just got knocked offline. What do you mean? <laughs> okay. I'm assuming all the lights are IP connected what because why would everything on? go down? Or She's I don't bad. get it. <laughs> Building management system. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure I can even play this part right now fully. <laughs> Full disclosure, you guys. <laughs> so, uh, it looks like yeah. Very nice. Wow. All right. So that was short and que- uh, short and sweet. Um, <laughs> what a way to make entrances, you guys. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Okay. Now, <laughs> for the lay people out there, that's what we do. We walk into the office. We're jamming. We're cool. We got our own soundtrack going. <laughs> I don't wear fishnets. <laughs> okay, so um, if you don't mind, a little bit of context to this: Are they hacking or are they playing games? Are this like this? This was a hacker organization that okay. she used to be involved in. It was her old boy, old boyfriend that uh, still runs it. Okay. Now, were they hacking for the context of again, like you were saying, social hacktivism, or no? We're gonna make some money. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't watch the entire episode, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then, well, of course, that's what she was doing. What um, what the group did after she left, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Didn't get that context, yeah. So, Matt, what was your first impression seeing that? Well, you know, there's some bits and pieces there that uh, have merit, but when you put it together as a whole, it doesn't. <laughs> so, the bits and, bits no. and pieces are like, you know, uh, electrical 
providers who are known as grid providers. You know, they have separate networks, their systems are segregated. And then, you know, in, in most commercial buildings, there's not, you know, Ethernet connected, network connected, you know, control panels, electrical control panels. Uh, all those things are like conceivable, but very, very unlikely. And then, you know, an image popping up on all everybody's screen at the same time, that's definitely not something that would. <laughs> that would happen. So uh, it's it's kind of cool, though. It reminds me of the movie Hackers, if you all have ever seen that. They, there's somewhat of a similar scene in, in that. Maybe that's where they got it from. I mean, it's just dramatic, right? All the lights go off, right? Like, what's, what I would venture to guess, th- theatrically speaking, is you got all these, like, really savvy tech, techy tech techs, but are taken down and they lose what their power was. Literally, they lose their power. Right. So I thought that was really interesting. But okay. So, but the whole skull, like when all the machines got taken over, that's real. Right. That's pretty hollow. But maybe not, yes. Hollywood. not instantaneously, it, 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 yeah. but like if you. It, it could be, but it'd be very, very difficult yeah. to do. First, you got to get access to their environment um, to take them offline. There's ways to do it. Um, but um, a hacker, they'd have to be the worst hacker group in the world to even let you in in the first place. And then once you got in, going through your layers of defense, you've got to get on those systems. You got to implant um, something to take them over, and then something to display a graphic. Just so many layers there. Um, yeah, worst hacker group in the world if that was uh, plausible at all. <laughs> now, in the age of Internet of Things, you know where you have smart plugs and things like that. Um, there, there is a lot of school of thought that the attack vector is going to be on on things like that where, you know, everything in your house and, you know, in your in your buildings and that sort of thing started to be connected to the internet. So it does change the the attack vector, or the attack surface. Now, whether or not, you know, somebody's going to target, you know, <laughs> your, you know, your specific internet of things devices that there, there still remains a lot to be seen there, but it, it is at least opening up the possibility when you start connecting things to the internet. Yeah, it's good for us guys in cybersecurity, you know, zero trust frameworks, least privilege, you know, there's so many layers of defense from the data to the application to physical to the perimeter, you know, um, it's, it's good for us. It's a complex world. Well, I mean, literally, like, look, it's been a few eons since I've been in your guys' world. I'm just a groupie now, so I'm sure you guys all to success. But, like, if you think of the OSI model, it's literally going through everything, right? It literally goes down from, like, the network, you know, hardware layer all the way up to the app layer. That's why I was laughing because to me it was like, it was like all encompassing all at once, yep. everything that we think of. <laughs> you know, I was like, ooh, hey, I can, I can recognize. I took the app down, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, okay, so <laughs> scale of one to 10 guys. <laughs> one being a great cartoon to uh, <laughs> 10 for accuracy. Uh, 1.75. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that as well, John. <laughs> being the uh, being the engineering computer scientist that we are, <laughs> it was an so entertaining, it was though, nevertheless. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Okay, so ten for entertainment. Though. There you go. Okay, yeah, so. it was good. It was All good. right. Well, then I guess it would be like a five. Then if we average it out, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, no. Um, ah, no. How did how did you like it, uh, Sia? Uh, I liked it because it's so dramatic, right? Um, but again, I know enough to be dangerous, and I knew that that this was I knew this was a dramatic moment. It wasn't rooted in reality. I mean, her walking in first off with her own Beyonce like you know soundtrack going first off. If I, I tried that once as a joke with thank goodness a client meeting, like it was, it it went over well like a lead bomb like a lead like dud like it was like they were like they just thought it was funny at first, and then they're just like yeah you don't got the swag. So I was like, thanks guys. <laughs> and, and if you were going to be a hacker, would you have a handle? She's the black queen. Oh, is it black queen? Black queen? Yeah. Um, black queen, I think. I mean, look, I, if you're going to have a handle and, and you rock it, rock it. See your data by. See your data by. Yeah, see. That's pretty good. Is <laughs> that <So> bad? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Certainly, we're kind of weird about that. We just need you to run some bar association records. So why doesn't she? Again, get look at the, the hospital. The guys are dressed up. I was talking he's about the in like who was shot. That's right. Is that a, a tie run? His you know who hit her? That's what we're hoping to find no, out. No, no. Yes, it is. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's the uh, the privilege of being in IT is uh, you know often the suits like eccentric people, so it's okay to uh, 
you know, to, you to express look up the name James Colby Baylor and see if it uh, shows up anywhere in the system. I'm Whoa. just pressing keys. I don't know what, what it's it? doing. <laughs> the system is insane. It's completely Linux-based, open-source programming. And you don't see this in government systems. I mean, outside of, like, Switzerland. James Colby Baylor. Right. I get it. Chop, chop. Jeez. Does that guy have no personality? Uh -uh, nothing. This is the where this is another guy inside of the FBI tech analyst, and he and Garcia actually end up becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. This is how he starts to like initials JCB. So they're all they're both FBI people going after each other. Yeah, in this instance, they're leveraging him while she's off or something. Is there a problem? Well, this might be the coolest girl I've ever met. I've never laid eyes on her. Well, her gooey is mind blowing. The list. Her gooey is mind blowing. <laughs> Hell's that even mean? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Graphical user interface. <laughs> no, I get that, but what does it even mean? Like these are just browser windows he's pulling up. This yeah, isn't good. She, she had some custom art there. Looks like she Which has with it. AI now we'll all have some. Oh, don't get me started on what AI. The hell. Oh, no, you don't. I do not have time for this. Feels like a god. No. Chance. Now, if I can ever convince my friends and family to watch this, yet. this is what we do at work all day. It's very exciting. Right? <laughs> what is she doing in there? Okay, so let's you pause. you really want to know? So, I have to stop that for a second. Because I am not technical, I'm I tech I'm technical concept person, but I'm not the one that would ever be at the keyboard, cr you know, crank it out code or anything like that. So what I saw to me right there looked like a bunch of browsers and images, and yeah, there was some line of code popping. But would you guys be like having forty thousand browsers up like that? A, I think that would slow the machine down, and B, <laughs> it that's not <laughs> right, right? Am I wrong? What? It's uh, oh, they're depicting a lot of things there at one time. Once, so they're talking about Linux, so you know, uh, console based, you know, computing, you know, which is you have to kind of know a little bit about what you're doing in order to type into that instead of using a GUI, a graphical user interface, which you know, an interface on top of an underlying operating system. So they're kind of you know, trying to. Uh, pull at the this guy's smart strings and then suddenly he's trying to access a system and he's locked himself out uh, so he thinks and then he realizes no actually this somebody else is in this system and they're locking me out and that's when he's saying not so fast and he's trying to you know counter counteract what he's doing and uh, essentially they're it's becoming a uh, you know who, who can get in the system fastest and uh, so somebody set a booby trap essentially and when he logged in they an alarm went off, and at least this is what they're portraying. And then the person and the the other character is trying to stop everything that he's doing. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of fun. And if you rely on someone to stop the hacker, uh, everything happens so fast. That's not yeah. real. There's no two people in a battle of wits. You know, and it's very carefully staged, planned, researched, and executed. Yeah, as much as we'd like it to be real and exciting, that's, that's not our job. <laughs> right, it, it it goes in stealth. It's already pre-coded, and it doesn't emerge until, like, sometimes if it's coded for, like, months later to trigger, right? Is it that, can. like, like a Trojan yeah. and all that? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> okay. But there have been situations, however, that... Well, this is not an RDP situation, right? This is simply they're trying to, like, out-code each other, and it's popping up at the same time, but it's not... They're not in each other's machine, or are they on the same machine duking it out with each other? I think it's That's implied. What I'm to understand. Yeah, it's implied they're on the same uh, Linux server with different uh, different uh, console sessions. Yeah, and and Linux is a open source Unix based. You know, Linux is what Matt seventy percent of the servers worldwide. And certainly in a government agency, um, you would not be using the free open source version. You know, you'd have a commercial version that has regular security and patch release and tested and things like that. So yeah, it should be, I, I can't believe that uh, any government agency would allow someone to uh, 
to run open source Linux in their in their environment that would be immediately fireable events. <laughs> I, we call that resume generating. Yeah. <laughs> resume generating. Yes. <laughs> so okay, so that was one point of one point of accuracy, right? I've never thought that I would see Linux, right? That's a that's yeah. one point yeah, of absolutely. accuracy. Yeah, absolutely. That was that was accurate. Yeah. So someone knew a little bit about IT and you know kind of threw that in there. I don't even believe Switzerland would do that, but. I think they just insult an entire uh, country and or if they're, unless they're like referencing CERN maybe, it's like what else is going on in Switzerland? Could be. Could be, could be. I don't know. Hey CERN, want to hit me up? I'm just kidding. Don't, don't hit me up. I mean, actually I do because I watch a lot of TikTok videos of like them, like, like breaking the time space continuum with their machine, whatever I've, I've been like tinfoiling lately, but if you've never heard of it, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. We'll, okay. We'll just, we'll just move on to the next yeah. topic then. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> We're safe though. Are we safe? No, apparently that, no, there's a theory. Uh, so you're a, saying see a goodbye, John and Matt? I gotta uh, stop. Yeah, no, no. It would be the multiverse of Sia saying goodbye. And at the same time, Sia in this, this multiverse would say, this universe would say yes. So yeah, that's what the theory is saying is that CERN broke through and crossed multiverses look that's pretty cool it's 3 a.m when i'm watching this stuff okay i don't know what i'm remembering <laughs> okay just i'm just trying to go to bed people but uh all right so i digress though but uh let's let's continue on in the scene because it does crack me up a little bit and there's hope. look how casual they all look and she's the one that's hustling like a mo oh, like no. really you are not seriously trying to backhack me oh nicely played This is just way too easy. That's right, chase me. Oh, I thought you had skills. So is this guy uh, also another person? Like, or they bring him in? Oh, here we go. He so. gets a more regular spot on the show as it goes along. Home. Does it? Okay. Here we go with all the other screens in the room. Did you notice that? Yeah. There's a lot of cases I flagged. Okay. Everybody take a copy. We need to see if any of the agents overlap in all of the cases. Look, and he just pulled out a USB. Yeah, this, this to me is like red flags. <laughs> USB saves it all. <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah. I, uh, the, uh, the USB ports are most likely shut down. Now, there is a concept yeah, of and then network access just... control protocols where you could be shunning ports on the network when things are going on and conceivably things would stop. But yeah, a uh, USB stick suddenly fixing everything. No. Okay. Well, what did you do? Reboot the systems? And if, you, if we found out how to reboot them that quick in Hollywood, then got to bring that to, uh, to, to corporate America for sure. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that USB stick, my friends. Um, isn't it the most, one of the easiest, fastest way to corrupt a system is to bring a USB stick and just randomly place it in like random mm -hmm. ports anywhere? Isn't that like rule number one of what you're not supposed to do? Probably rule number two after not, or maybe three, not giving out bad information, not clicking malicious or strange emails, and then external devices. Yeah. Yeah, no, not good. Yeah, and then I've, second part to that is what the hell's on that USB that suddenly can fix things? Like what's it <laughs> implying? That's rebooted very, from uh, Flash. That's very Hollywood. <laughs> <don't know>. Yeah, <laughs> that's very Hollywood. Very Hollywood. Are you saying there's no like uh, like skeleton app coding whatever in there in that USB that could like be the end all to solve these problems? You're saying that's not that's not feasible. <laughs> Maybe it's something that we should work on. <laughs> Just <laughs> get a patent. I mean, as a security person, isn't that like that? Just like to me, like again, one of those moments I would fall out and be like, "Ain't no legit credible security person is gonna carry a USB and be like, I got this." Like, if you saw your colleague doing that, what would you first thought be? Um, I hope they're not in my organization. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. a nice way of putting I, it. I knew if somebody <laughs> once that would just, you know, leave USB drives in the parking lot or something and just to see if somebody would pick it up and try to use it and people would. Yeah, you know, it's 
Oh, free USB. Somebody dropped their USB stick. Now I've got a free. You know, it's not as big of a deal now. I don't think we run into that as much now with, you know, OneDrive and, you know, Google Drive and things like that. But, yeah, you know, five years ago, everybody was or more like, you know, five to ten years ago, people were still walking around moving things from device to device on USB stick. And so that, and that's, yeah. you know, I think that raises a good point that, kind of the attack vector, the attack surface just changes over time, right? As technology changes and you have to make sure you protect whatever surface that is as technology changes. Okay, so what would be the recommendation? In this scene right here, they're hacking, but they're going back and forth. They're like doing some like, I don't know, what's that thing when you do airplanes and you like battle royale with each other? Um, Top Gun Dog style. fight. Dog fight, yeah. Um, A, that's not realistic. But B, it was realistic that they mentioned Linux, right? Not being in, you know, government uh, networks. Um, C, I still don't understand. You've got Mr. Bland personality FBI guy. And then you've got, I think, Shamar Moore, who's beautiful. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yes, I did. Sorry. <laughs> not sorry. I appreciate beauty. Group included, of course, of course, and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, why are... Like, is that even legal? Do Would we as a, a entity go against our own teams? Is that Hollywood? We go against our teams all the time, little fiefdoms, but actually on the system, that's Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love how you guys are so, like, smiling, going, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to admit <laughs> nothing here. <laughs> We're very but cautious. again, another yeah, entertaining yeah. clip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so scale one to ten, accuracy. One being, yeah, great cartoon. Ten being, yeah, that actually can happen. Where are you guys sitting? Down into negative territory at this on this one. <laughs> <laughs> They're really okay. stretching. It's really stretching on that. Yeah, but entertaining. I'm with Matthew. <laughs> okay, so overall, with our videos that we've uh, gone over today for Criminal Minds, and yes, like I said, you guys, ABC is extraordinarily like particular about what can be shown and whatnot. But um, as a uh, technology and cybersecurity professional experts that you guys uh, are, would you recommend this for uh, anyone to be interested to get into technology or cybersecurity? Sure. Yeah, I think a career in the FBI and um, all the wonderful things that can really happen would be very challenging and exciting. You know, choose the light, not the dark. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, just as with anything in the movies, you know, uh, temper that with uh, the reality of um, all the thinking and all the time you have to spend in the chair and learning and studying. It's a lifelong adventure. So, uh, yeah, if you're into that, it's a great career on the light side. Maybe fun on the dark side, but unethical, jail, no good. Go to the light. Go to the light. <laughs> Cybersecurity is, I think, the <laughs> fastest growing segment of technology, you know, and, and has a lot of AI in it as well. So you're, you know, a lot of people are interested in AI these days, and uh, you couple that with cybersecurity, and you have a pretty good place to start in technology that can uh, serve you well for a long time. I tell a lot of people when. They ask me that, uh, you know, when they find out I'm in technology and they're trying to get into it, what what areas should I focus in? And cybersecurity almost is my immediate reaction. I mean, okay, I don't want to go off onto a tangent, but only because I am selfish. I do have another show that I do, and it's all about AI and the future and its relation with bots and all that stuff and, you know, <clears throat> AI generative technologies. Um is that another area within cybersecurity that is new frontier to recognize those types of things like deep fake, for example, is that a, a real issue for you guys or is that something that has been addressed or is being addressed? I've got a meeting on deep fake uh, coming up in a couple of hours. Yeah. AI is um, accelerating the change of pace in, in our lives in many different ways and cybersecurity, especially now, at Checkpoint, we've been using AI engines and machine learning for a long time to recognize zero-day exploits and, and things like that. Um, I think of it as, you know, so I'm old now. I did a degree in programming back in the mid-90s, 
and you know it was very low level you know just assembler and then you were doing c formula translator fortran and then the language is built out more modules more modules and i almost think of ai and code generation as going what are we on now the fifth generation of programming languages where everything's so easy ai is going to accelerate that what 25 years is going to happen in two years you still need people to control it right now but um, it's just really smart really fast and uh, enables people to do a lot of things that uh, that we're just we're not sure what's going to come down the pipe so we're trying to be as ready as we can in the cybersecurity world uh, every day okay now you're frightening me because i'm like skynet should i just go ahead and just say right now and just declare okay <laughs> overlord like whatever it might be I'm, I'm on your side um matt any final thoughts on that? uh <clears throat> The, the the video clips that you saw today, or and or your thoughts on AI and cybersecurity. Oh, you know, the the clips were fun. I mean, it, again, it's it's you know Hollywood technology, but um, you know it's it's neat to see it evolve and you know to see Hollywood influence technology, technology influence Hollywood, and keep it relevant and interesting. And um, yeah, so uh, it's uh, something that gives you. Uh, a chuckle for sure and then when you peel back the layers of the onion you analyze it hadn't done this before uh in this type of format it's been a lot of fun oh well thank you and thank you guys it's been such a pleasure chatting with you and of course you know if anyone wants to get a hold of you obviously we can always you know just comment you guys let us know what you think is this the idea of um the future that we've always envisioned is it depicted on media is it our potential future or is it something where hey let's bring it back to reality of what really is occurring so we're not you know scaring the population so would love your comments please like share subscribe as always and john matt thank you so much for joining us on checkpoint real talk guys we'll see you until the next time thank you it was fun see that's a wrap on today's episode of Checkpoint Real Talk. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and some of those other buttons to show us your appreciation. And if you want to learn more or have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time for another episode of Checkpoint Real Talk.